Welcome, welcome everyone uh, back to AMOS, our course on Agile methods and open source software. This is the third section of the third part where we finish the introduction to software engineering processes with an overview of Scrum as we are performing it in this course, the AMOS project. So we will uh, give an overview, I will give an overview go over the three main roles that students at this point of time are already familiar with and then put it all together by going over the core activities in which people playing these three main roles interact to get the work done. Going back to the Agile Manifesto, you know that Agile methods have a particular focus, were driven by an initial rationale of um, being able to flexibly react to changing circumstances, which is the main thing that traditional plan-driven software development did not let you do. So there were the insights that you can achieve such flexibility and ability to adapt by focusing on people and how they work rather than on processes following slavishly processes or using specific tools that you would need working software that you can use in show and tell sessions to demo what you are doing rather than expecting people will read and understand and have a shared picture of what to do from a documentation. Um, then that you actually work with your customers in a constructive, positive way, pulling into the same direction rather than having a conf confrontational situation over a contract with deliverables that are defined once at the beginning and are hopelessly out of date soon thereafter. And finally, all of that actually sh should not only um, uh, give you the opportunity, but really empower you to change things as you learn that this change may be necessary, as opposed to the classic plan driven, let's follow this particular plan and don't look left and right, whatever reality uh, is now. So with that, we do Scrum, we do extreme programming. Scrum is the process, extreme programming are the engineering practices later. So then Scrum, the process we follow. Scrum itself is one of the agile methods, or one of the earlier ones, earliest ones defined by uh, Schwaber and Sutherland in 93, 95. The original term is uh, a rugby situation of, uh, of a huddle or where people are intimately, as you can see from this photo, interacting with each other, pushing and pushing and shoving. And I guess that was some idea of what the scrum team does, even though I would argue that metaphor will break down pretty quickly. At least I hope you're not uh, punching each other or pushing each other. So uh, in software development, it's an agile process model, uh, a minimal agile process model. And I think that's one reason why it won in the marketplace. It's comparatively simple. Um, the original definition didn't actually have anything to do with software development, though in software it is where Scrum was really successful. So much so that uh, the most recent definition uh, as laid out in the 2020 Scrum Guide, focuses on software development, recognizing that this is where their success is or was and probably will remain. The two fathers originally differed, but they've come around, come together and seem to somewhat harmonize now. So when we talk about software development, we need to look at scopes, uh, complexity. And in that overall breakdown of complexity, where at the largest level, a company has business units which have product portfolios within those product portfolios, there are individual products. Individual products evolve over releases, uh, product releases. Uh, product releases are built out of sprints, which are based out of daily work. In that breakdown, Scrum tells us how to handle everything from the day-to-day -day activities up to single products. It does not tell us anything beyond uh, one, one product or project. 
The overall process of Scrum by the Scrum 2020 guide only talks about sprints, which are these short time boxes, short iterations in which you perform a full cycle of planning what you do, executing what you planned and reviewing and assessing the quality of that work to make a release decision. Finishing up usually with a short retrospective on improving your process. So you have that is one sprint and the key of agile methods to agile methods is that these sprints or iteration length are short, meaning in the one week, as we do it in the Amos project, two weeks more likely in industry, or up to four weeks, but not longer. And in comparison to plan-driven software development, that is so much shorter. Well, in a plan-driven software development process, you would go through these three steps over a year or two or even five years, uh, only once. So in Scrum and in Agile methods, you repeatedly do these sprints or iterations so that you can change course or adjust course in a new planning session after the previous sprint finished. While Scrum only tells us about software development as the sequence of never ending sprints, this never ending sequence of sprints, uh, in reality, people still group uh, batch uh, or a certain number of subsequent sprints into a product release. And such a product release might happen every six months or every 12 months. And, uh, and, uh, and you would also have sequences of these product releases. So if you're a consulting firm and you're doing client projects, you might have that one project release. If you're a software vendor doing product development for a market, you might be evolving your product over a long time horizon and be releasing in half year cycles or in 12 month cycles, or one year cycles. And this way you aggregate sprints into larger releases. So that's why we distinguish the sprint release from the product release. Within Scrum, people play the roles that you already know, product owner, software development, Scrum master. And each of these roles, when played by people, carry out specific practices like sprint planning, having a daily scrum, planning the release and what have you, leading to results, the artifacts, the output of work, the product backlog, sprint backlog, a burn down chart and so forth. These three roles interact. These three roles were actually not designed to be completely functionally isolated from each other. That is the classic perspective where you have an engineering manager separate from the software developers. In Scrum, in a unique way, uh, these roles combine activities that traditionally and from a functional perspective would belong to different roles. And it is that integration of behavior in one role and then in one person that gives Scrum its power. So in the following slides, we will go through these uh, three roles and discuss what they do. I can't help it. I'm being told I must teach you about the one joke that Scrum has bestowed upon the work world, which is what makes you committed. So first of all, committed simply means that uh, you are really well committed uh, to delivering a result while other people might only be involved. So in Scrum, the committed people are the product owner, software development, Scrum master, because they are the Scrum team, as opposed to customers and funders and so forth who are involved, but are not on the Scrum team. So the joke goes uh, like this, uh, the chicken and the pig, uh, who are big friends, decide, or the chicken tells the pig, come on, let's go into business together and we will uh, have a restaurant. Um, I will provide the eggs and you will provide the ham. And then the pig says, oh no, you would only be involved, I would be committed because, well, the pig is probably going to lose the legs uh, since they're supplying the ham. The eggs are apparently easier to let go of. Ha ha ha. All right, next. 
Product Owner, the first role of Scrum. A pretty badly named uh, role, but what the product owner uh, does or is responsible for is making sure that what is being developed has value to the business that it is being developed for. So there's a purpose for, of software development and you can tie that down in business value somehow, usually for the person paying for the work. And the product owner needs to identify what that is and make sure that this business value is achieved. And that's their overall responsibility. They provide the product vision and uh, communicate it to developers. They provide the requirements, the features, uh, describe them using user stories, provide them through software developers. The product owner plans and helps plan software development and tracks progress towards goals like product releases. Product owner is a difficult name because it's questionable whether they really have ownership here. Ownership is limited within the scope of the product team, the, the scrum team, they probably can be considered owner. They are of course not the business owner. Uh, also the term product is rather difficult because we have this dichotomy of scrum being used both for software product development, products for a market versus projects for clients. So often uh, scrum is being used in consulting projects and really um, what the product owner is responsible for is that the project to be delivered to a client actually meets the expected business value. So even if it's a custom project for a client, you apparently should view the output using the word uh, product, which I find confusing, but so far, so it doesn't matter really. So what do the product owners uh, do in terms of activities? Well, they have a, uh, the traditional product manager, the strategic product manager needs to identify if it's a software vendor, the uh, business opportunity. A product owner doesn't really do that. They start perhaps with the product specification and they aid in planning. Their particular job is to prioritize what's important and they may be tracking progress. The product owner combines activities that traditionally have been assigned to a product manager and an engineering manager. So the product owner is a unique combination of work from these two traditional roles. And these uh, processes that the product owner is responsible for are turned into a certain output, the product specification into the product backlog the product planning into a release plan or sprint backlog and so forth. So again, a Scrum product owner is more narrowly, arguably a technical product manager who has the responsibility for keeping the software being developed on track for achieving the business value that is seen in the potential output and that leads to someone funding all of this development. And the Scrum product owner, like a technical product manager, unlike a strategic product manager, is fairly closely involved with the engineering team. And it's important to remind everyone, like we do in the Amos project, where we add a release manager, that Scrum is a framework and needs to be adjusted and instantiated for a specific situation as a framework it gives you well that frame that you need to make work for your particular people context set of abilities etc and goals next up software developer so the software developer holds overall responsibility for delivering working software you know? so they should feel they should be in charge and they should feel responsible and accept that responsibility that there is quality software at the end. So they commit to delivering. And the idea is that it's not just the individual de developers, but it's the whole software development team which stands behind the software being developed. What software? Well, what the product owner communicates in terms of feature requests. 
a Scrum software development team and hence the individual developers in there have pretty large sway over how to do it. They are responsible for it. So their responsibilities include everything from high level architecture down to test scripts that uh, will test any implementation. So architecture, design, implementation, etc. On top of that, software developers are also given the power of not only estimating uh, how big something is, which implies also to some extent how long it will take to implement this, but not being contradicted on it. Their estimation is what counts. No engineering managers there and tells them, no, that's much smaller. Hence, I expect you to be done earlier. Um, this is not how Scrum works. The software developers agreement as a team is the final word on the size and complexity of something. And it does not lead to a specific deadline or for pushing things into a particular time frame. So Scrum clearly and cleanly, thinking back to the magic triangle, leaves open as the dependent variable uh, when you will be done. Scope is defined at the beginning of planning. Quality is always supposed to be high and cost is fixed anyway, since the team doesn't change. Hence, when you will done, be done follows from that and you can't do much about it. The Scrum software developer thereby combines work activities, practices of engineering managers, software developers, and even quality assurance engineers. They, all of this is on the shoulders of software developers, which is one of the reasons why Scrum sometimes runs into problems. The assumption is there are only really, really good software developers and poor software developers don't exist, kind of. Because in order to do all of this with a certain quality, well, you've got to be a good developer. All right, so um, the set of activities are maybe a bit less diverse than those of a product owner, but at its core is architecture, design, and implementation, uh, the planning of that, as well as quality assurance. Scrum Master, third and unique, if you will, Scrum role. The Scrum Master is responsible for improving the overall process, making sure it's the best possible process the team can achieve. And by challenging and leading and coaching uh, individual members of the team to be their best, as you say. Uh, you can boil it down for, uh, you can somewhat reduce it for a the Amos project where the Scrum Master really uh, focuses on making sure that non-technical problems are removed from the team's path. So non-technical obstacles from the project path. And traditionally, that's what an engineering manager uh, would do. Uh, the engineering manager watches over the software developers and uh, has to make sure the software developers don't run into roadblocks or obstacles that are not of a technical nature. So the engineering manager, he or she runs around making sure all the necessary resources are there, access to them is there, etc., etc. And the Scrum, uh, Scrum Master uses uh, the impediment backlog to, to make explicit such process improvement. In the Scrum team, there's really no line reporting. Um, all the roles and then the people typically individually filling those roles are independent of each other, are on an equal level. There is no, traditionally no more senior software developer or the product owner doesn't really have, hold any sway over the software developers, etc. In real life, inside a company, of course, you still have line reporting, meaning there's a manager of yours and you will not have, even with Scrum, a situation where there won't be such a manager. You will always have such line reporting and it is that the roles are mapped onto people from these lines of reporting. 
so that within the context of Scrum, they may get these rights of independence, but not necessarily in their performance reviews. So we will have, even with Scrum, the traditional line reporting structure inside companies where there's a product manager who collaborates with an engineering manager who has a certain amount of people um, at their disposal. disposal. However, if they then do Scrum, the engineering manager, if they want to do it right, will not start delegating work to the, uh, to the uh, software developers, but rather will let the software developers be Scrum software developers and the product manager be a Scrum product owner. And then they are on equal footing and as part of a Scrum team. The engineering manager then will be much less hands-on, more removed, giving more autonomy to the Scrum team to find their way and be in some sort of Scrum master coach, uh, making sure the context is right for proper execution. Uh, role. So with these core roles come core activities as students of this course are familiar. Um, we have structured, well, sprints are structured into these three phases, if you will. Uh, the planning phase, the execution phase, and the three R's, which is three smaller phases, activities chained but really viewed as phases here. The key is that, again, even though I call it phases, they are so short that we don't fall into the trap of plan-driven software development where reality evolves faster than we can catch up with it. The whole point of having cycles of these chain phases is that you finish a cycle, a sprint, so quickly that you get enough time to react to react to a changing environment. So P planning execution is only shortly done shortly. Most of the time is in execution and then the three R's. Leading to a sprint structure, maybe a week or two, as you already know it, illustrated here. There's a couple of events that you that are required for it to be scrum. Sprint planning most notably next sprint preparation, review, release, and retrospective, as well as the daily coordination meeting called the Daily Scrum. Outside of these meetings, you have the regular work streams following from the three roles, product owners, product management, software developers, to software development, and Scrum Master mostly does process improvement. You can see how on the x-axis, I started the sprint on a Wednesday, you might think, well, why not start it on a Monday morning and then close it out on a Friday afternoon? Well, Scrum or the general recommendation is that you do not have a big break over the weekend, but rather you have the break in between sprints uh, within the week, hence Tuesday afternoon of Wednesday to Wednesday or in our case during the team meeting in the middle of Wednesday or Thursday. And this is so that you don't forget the learnings from the review, release and retrospective so much because there's a weekend in between when you go into sprint planning. So make it close to each other so that these key events feed into each other rather than being interrupted by a longer pause. Also visible here is 9 to 5 on the y-axis. Scrum hopes or argues that it provides a rhythm, uh, a pattern of work that prevents burnout in that you are not forced to work long hours. So that's 9 to 5. That is the hope. And so here have, you have the work streams again as they are assigned to different people. But the key is that these people work together as a team, as the Scrum team in these key events. Sprint planning, define what to do in the upcoming sprint. Everyone's involved. And the output of this planning is stored in the sprint backlog as what the developers commit to as delivering over the coming week. To be empowered to do so, 
they have the right to determine what goes in there in terms of total amount of size or complexity of work. Which particular features is still the product owner who prioritizes features? So the software developers can only take the most highly prioritized features and say we can do it in this upcoming sprint or not. During planning, the Scrum Master observes team dynamics and may have feedback or may take additional action outside the meeting. After planning, follows execution. So um, the actual work needs to be done. The product owner needs to work on the product backlog and identify business value and make it precise by writing it down. Software developers need to do all the work that they committed to as to be done in the current sprint. And the Scrum Master follows up on impediments to the process. Before you go into the review, release and retrospective meeting, uh, you should get together or the product owner should get together with one developer and go over the product backlog most notably, so that there's enough content, enough independent of each other content, so that the features make sense from an engineering perspective as well, that the features have an initial estimated size, what the software developer or the soft senior software developer thinks they are, to see that they can even fit the sprint. Basically, in next sprint preparation, the product owner shows their work to one software developer to get feedback to make sure that what a product owner has is going to propose in the actual sprint planning makes sense. The worst thing that can happen is that the product owner blows up the sprint planning meeting because the most highly prioritized features are nonsense or just too big to be done. And sometimes a product owner is not sufficiently technical to understand that, hence they need to prepare for the sprint planning meeting and um, they need sometimes an engineer to help them with that. Well, then comes the closing events sequence of a sprint, which is perform the review, where the product owner goes over the work that was supposed to be done and signs off on the work to be done. The sprint release, um, where there's a decision, can we release this to stakeholders, to customers or not? And the retrospective, where the team looks at its process, how it's doing and how to possibly improve. So with that, I gave you a short rundown over how Scrum works. You got some of it already in the crash course early on, but here this overview served to put 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 things back into perspective and to show how it's a consequential follow-up or evolution of software engineering processes from before. This concludes section three of the third part and the next part of the course will actually go over product management and the product owner role in agile software development methods. With that, thank you very much for your time and attention and see you in the next part of the course.